and uh, welcome back. I'm uh, in the workshop, a uh, folklore workshop, and um, I've got a postal run to do, the hiking stick with the deer antler, and I will show you how that did come out. I'm quite pleased with that, although it did take a lot of time with the drying times that had to be involved with that. Um, I'm actually wood burning at the moment, and I'll let you have a very quick look and see how I go about that. Um, you know, I don't use a, a proper wood burning machine. I just use a soldering iron because I use that for other jobs as well. So I use it as a multi, multi faceted tool, shall I say, but it does the job for myself. But it does involve um, being a bit careful or very careful because I did actually have an accident uh, a while back. And if I can find the picture, I will put it on here where basically as I was going around the shaft of the hiking stick, with the actual burn uh, soldering iron, it slipped as I was applying pressure, rolled over the hiking stick and across my uh, thigh, I was wearing shorts and obviously that left me with a very big deep burn. Um, so yeah, don't mess about with soldering irons, get a proper wood burning machine. Uh, that's advice from a stick maker there. But yeah, I'm actually now wood burning and I'm in the process of doing this one here. As you can see, I've got a hair drawn on it and I've just started burning and uh, I'll quickly let you see how I do that. First thing to remember is safety. I'm wearing trousers. I've also got a pair of overalls on top of me. Should I slip? Because I don't want another accident. And as you can see, I can't burn straight off uh, the bat. I do actually have to have a drawing to follow. I'm not a gifted artist. Um, and as you can see, I'm just tracing the actual line around with my um, actual um, soldering iron. Now, this one here has a, a tip where I can actually do fine work or as fine as I can get it. And because it goes into a wider section before going into the main heating shaft, I can apply bigger areas to like shade and increase the depth of the actual burn. So basically, I'll just get myself set here. You can see basically, it's just a case of drawing it back. And basically I'm using the conical of that uh, tip to actually do most of the work. I can do finer work with the tip, like if I'm doing the eyes, going around like that. Or if I need a really big heavy line, I just bring it right down on it and I bring it around. And you can see I've instantly got a heavier burn there. So, like I said, you've got to be careful because you're on a round smooth surface because it's sanded. You're applying pressure to obtain the burn and it could easily slip off. And uh, yeah, so it's all about being careful. You can see, uh, you might not be able to see it, but I'm actually rolling as I go along with the line. I'm actually moving the surface of the stick. So I'm moving it, rolling it to allow me to try and keep a, a flat burn. Um, like I said, if you've got too much of an angle and you're placing pressure, which you do, you know, it can slip off. So yeah, you have to be careful there. And um, I'll just get this leg here done. There, and I'll put this back and I'll just show you. If you do have a mistake, if you've got a very sharp knife, you can bring the wood back a little bit and then use some fine sanding paper to try and uh, get it back out. You may not fully uh, retrieve um, the burn mark, but you can get it back enough so you can re-burn it to allow yourself to get another uh, go or second pass to get that correct line. But uh, ultimately, um, you really want to try your best to get you know that burn line as perfect as you can um, first time. These are only temporary measures. Um, worst case scenario, you have to sand it all the way back out. But because you're burning, you know, 
a, you know, a depth into the wood, you kind of alter the profile of the whole shaft. So you have to be careful. These are only temporary. It's like this hair here. I can just get the sharp part here and just gently work it over the wood. And I'm removing bits of wood, as you can see there. You can see the dust on it. So basically, I'm just getting it back. I don't really want to do this on, on a good burn. But um, yeah, in the interests of showing, I'll just show you. And when you take it back, you've got to remember that you are actually creating a different profile to the shaft. And you can see there, I've got wood dust there, and I and from that line there, I've taken it back. But I will now have to sand that. It is it is um yeah a real a real annoyance and <laughs> I've actually just done this to actually a good um right there you go you can see it then I've taken that line back a, uh, a few mil and that's how you can create uh, correct a mistake if you've burnt but um, you really do not want to do that but um, yeah. I'm going to go and get this done and uh, we'll have uh, a little look at uh, the other hiking stick. Yeah, one thing I did forget to mention, like I say, when you're doing real heavy lines, you can get a buildup of carbon and actual, um, you know, soot and all like, you know, burnt wood particles on the actual um, burning instrument in itself. And that will need cleaning because what will happen is it will build up, it reduces the heat transfer to the wood. And not only that, um, it can actually leave a coloration, like a dark coloration, almost like you've had a pencil and um, gone behind your burn. And all that is, is the carbon that's actually being left behind because there's a build up on the actual um, like burn tip. I'm not sure if you would get that with a, a, a proper burning instrument, but obviously it's an issue I suffer with. And I have to periodically just, just give it a clean. And But more often than not, I do find I get um, a loss of heat transfer to the wood if the actual metal isn't clean. Just something to bear in mind. Something else to bear in mind is different woods burn with a different degree of ease and quality and also um, they take to burning better. Hazel, which I did the hairs earlier, are really, really, really good woods to um, you know burn. It, it burns easy, doesn't require a lot of pressure. Yet this one I'm about to do here with a stag head is holly, is a hardwood. This, you have to actually hold the actual iron on top of the wood. That fraction longer than you do with holly, uh, with hazel, because it's a harder wood. So it takes longer for the heat and the burn to impregnate the wood. So, you know, you will have to bear that in mind. Uh, some woods do actually require a bit more effort to actually burn. Also, going over bark, um, I don't have any at the moment I'm doing with bark, but I have always found that it is pretty much a waste of my time trying to burn bark. That's why if I'm doing one of my natural collection, I will strip a little area off, which I'm going to do the burn in, to reach the good, um, should I say, you know, heartwoods and the woods inside, which will take a burn. I never try to burn on, on bark and if I'm doing um, a natural one which I want most of my bark to be on that obviously means my burning has to stay to a minimum but yeah so those are a few little factors you may have to consider as well. 
Well, I've just come inside because um, we're doing a school run and on top of that we've got to do a postal run. So yeah, uh, I'm going to quickly show you that uh, red deer antler hiking stick that uh, I showed you um, in a couple videos before this one. So you'll be able to see pretty much uh, what you uh, end up with and um, yeah, it's uh, come out pretty good and I'll let you have a quick look. Um, you know, bear in mind it is uh, exactly what the customer asked for, you know, so it might not be to everybody's taste, but it's, you know, what a customer wants, a customer gets. Right, so that's the uh, red deer antler and it's the Y piece from it. I was able to leave um, this part of it on and not take it off because it's not too sharp. It's got a nice rounded piece there. So it's not going to be dangerous or in any danger of breaking off. The actual milliput that I put on is polished up to a nice white uh, end cap and it's like ice white like bone. I've got a nice little joint now and it's even all the way around as you can see which is what you're after. On the back I have a burnt on compass which was requested and obviously a name, some bees, um, some leaves with acorns, another bee down there, on this side a squirrel with an acorn, yet again more leaves with acorns, a dog little terrier dog and some artwork there which is in like a nice royal purple so yeah as, as a whole we're just getting ready for Christmas as you can see you've got one tree up and that is a bit of a mess here but uh, you can quite easily see that this stick has come out and it looks uh, quite nice there Well, you can see uh, this is pretty much my uh, last batch that I've got going through the workshop this side of Christmas. And, um, you know, I've been very pleased, but it's been a lot of work. It's brutally cold in here at the minute. I've got no heating. So I, I'm going to wrap this up, put, give them a finish. And uh, I've got to run to the depot to drop some sticks off to be delivered to customers. So, yeah, um, next year I'll take you along on a lot more builds with hiking sticks. But the calendar is moving fast and I do have to go and source my raw material. So that's harvesting sticks. So pretty much that will be what the next few videos will consist of. You coming along and seeing me harvest sticks. So yeah, from Folklore Hiking Sticks Workshop, um, this is a wrap, I think they call it. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, all the best and stay safe and take care. Yeah, so like I said, we've uh, just come into town to drop this uh, stick off. Another one that we got here. Um, tickets being printed, it'll come out. Then I'll attach it, put a bit more sellotape. I mean, I do like to put a bit of extra tape over the ticket to make sure, obviously, you don't. it doesn't get taken off in transit. The advantage is with this system, rather than the courier coming to the door, it actually seems to be a lot faster and better service for the customer so that you know there's no extra loops in the transit to the customer it seems to be more direct and faster the disadvantage by coming here I always get myself a Costa and chocolate bar um, so <laughs> it's uh, you know I'm putting a bit of weight on and I'm spending money I don't really need to spend but who isn't addicted to Costa 
So I've got the ticket and I'll quickly show you what I mean about the seller taping of it. Um, it's quite important because these tickets they generate in the shop, um, you know, there's a danger that they can unpeel. It's just a, a sticky label, that's all it is. So I put a little bit of tape just to guarantee its uh, security. So from there, as you can see, I've just wrapped it around. And I've put tape on each side running down there and also around just to help secure it. Um, obviously, I'm not showing the whole complete label for reasons it's a customer. But obviously, I'm now going to take that in and go and grab my Costa and chocolate bar.